Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Aldas and in today's video, I'm going to be rating the 10 seasons in the previous decade from worst to best. Now, obviously during this lockdown period um, of, without any F1, it's so strange. I'm really missing Formula 1, but it is a good time for me and obviously you as well. Uh, if you do want to watch F1 to go back and perhaps watch some of the really great seasons we've had in the past. So as I said, in today's video, I'm going to be rating the 10 seasons in the previous decade from worst to best. Uh, now guys, don't forget if you do enjoy my my content then don't forget to drop a like smash that subscribe button and check out my social medias instagram and twitter will be above but guys let's get into it so coming in at number 10, I've got the 2011 season. Now, I can already hear what some of you guys are saying, you know, but what about Canada 2011, one of the greatest races of all time? Yes, undoubtedly Canada 2011 is the highlight of the season. But the really strange thing is once you get rid of Canada 2011, the actual 2011 season is actually so just mediocre to boring. Of course, it was the season where Sebastian Vettel got his second world title. And really, there weren't even that many amazing races. I think China and Hungary were two quite good races. Uh, so that's definitely also some of the highlights highlights but the other big highlight was Felipe Massa and Lewis Hamilton uh, basically their feud all season long not only on track but off track as well they had some really crazy races just kept crashing into each other and also gave us some seriously classic moments uh, and some seriously classic interviews as well <laughs> maybe it's because I'm black <laughs> that's what LAG says <laughs> And also another really big uh, kind of moment in the season uh, or another big highlight was uh, Mark Webber's overtake on Fernando Alonso into Eau Rouge, one of the best overtakes ever. But other than that, I know, other than those really kind of small little highlights there and there, the racing wasn't that amazing. Uh, so yeah, in 10th uh, place is 2011. Now coming in at number nine is 2015. Now this was the season where Lewis Hamilton won his third driver's title. And of course it was the second season of Mercedes domination. Now, once again, because Lewis Hamilton kind of dominated, there wasn't really a title fight to talk about. The really big highlights in that season was Sebastian Vettel at Ferrari. And literally all the best races were when Sebastian Vettel won, like that Malaysian Grand Prix, his first ever win for Ferrari, a super, a super emotional race, but such a great one. And also the Singapore Grand Prix, that was quite a good one as well. Uh, of course, like I said, it was Lewis Hamilton that dominated it but another kind of big highlight was uh, Max Verstappen of course making his debut at the age of 17 so yeah in terms of some other good races Monaco was quite an interesting one as well if you remember the 2015 Monaco Grand Prix was when Lewis Hamilton was told to pit and then came out behind the safety car and behind Nico Rosberg and Sebastian Vettel so he lost out uh, he was in the lead leading the race and then he came out behind Nico Rosberg and was definitely not happy there was definitely again pockets of kind of entertainment really kind of good storylines of course with Seb at Ferrari uh, Max Verstappen but other than that it really was a very mediocre season and yeah definitely not one of the best so yeah 2015 is in ninth now in eighth place is the 2013 season a record-breaking season for Sebastian Vettel this was where he won nine consecutive races in a row and also of course uh, won his fourth straight world title uh, so yeah what an incredible season it is for him but as far as the racing and some of the races it wasn't really the best uh, there was again there was really it was kind of an interesting start to the season of course we had Kimi Raikkonen winning the first uh, race of the year we had uh, of course uh, Lewis Hamilton at Mercedes after he left McLaren so yeah what a storyline that was Fernando Alonso is of course last race win was at his home Grand Prix so yeah that was quite a good one and if you remember the Silverstone race was also a bit of an interesting one because of the whole exploding tyre Lewis Hamilton losing the lead due to his tyres exploding so yeah there was definitely a few good races there and there but overall I think the really big highlight was that nine consecutive wins and as much as that didn't produce great racing I still think it's a super kind of massive moment in Formula 1 so yeah I think it kind of is just above the others just a little bit uh, but yeah nevertheless I don't think it's going to go down as a classic season in Formula 1 so uh, yeah in a uh, Eighth place is 2013. Now coming in at number seven is 2016. Now this was of course the year where Nico Rosberg won his one and only title and retired at the end of the season. So I think that adds a little bit more to it. And we did get a title fight, but I don't think it was one of the better title fights, but at least it was a title fight and it did go down to the wire. But to be honest, overall, the season was a little bit flat. And I don't know about you guys, but I feel like those three years of Mercedes domination in 14, 15 and 16, all of those races kind of blend into my head at some, I keep forgetting which ones in which year. As far as 2016, the really big, the really big highlights in terms of races of course the Spanish Grand Prix where both of the Mercedes crashed into each other and Max Verstappen who had just been promoted took his first ever win in his first ever race making him the youngest ever winner in Formula 1 and then the 2016 Brazilian Grand Prix another uh, brilliant masterclass from both Hamilton and Verstappen in wet weather driving so yeah I feel like that's the two big highlights uh, but other than that I think the reason why 2016 is kind of a little bit better than the others it was good to see Rosberg get that championship win I felt like he deserved it after all those years at Mercedes uh, so yeah whilst the 
it did, whilst the entire season wasn't memorable, there were once again really good moments, some really good racing, and I think Max Verstappen yet again was probably the really big kind of headline of the year, as well as Nico Rosberg's shock retirement at the end of the year. Now, coming in at sixth place is the newest season, and that is 2019. Now, I thought 2019 was actually a really great year. Although we didn't have that long title fight, it was still such a great year. And I think the, the big storyline was not only Lewis Hamilton winning his sixth world title, which was definitely a historic moment, but I think it was Leclerc and Verstappen. And what a season for those two young drivers. And they produced basically the best races, let's be honest. I mean, as far as the highlights, Bahrain was a good one. Germany, uh, Austria, Brazil, basically any race that Max Verstappen won, that was the highlight of the year. So yeah, overall, I do think that 2019 was quite a strong season when you look at the whole all the young drivers as well the Norrises uh, the Albans as well so yeah as an overall season although maybe we didn't have that title battle I thought it was a really good season so yeah in sixth place is 2019. So we are now into the top five and in fifth place, I've got 2018. Now this is a season that could have been higher up the table. It was really a great season to see both Lewis Hamilton and Sebastian Vettel go head to head uh, for the title. And we always love to see, of course, Ferrari and Mercedes, but the fact that it kind of fizzled away towards the end of the season because of uh, Sebastian Vettel spinning all the time. And of course that crash in Germany and there was a lot of good races in 2018. There's no doubt about it. Of course, uh, Bahrain was a good one. Monaco where Daniel Ricciardo nursed his broken car to, to win the Monaco Grand Prix and then Germany as I said obviously where Sebastian Vettel uh, crashed at his home Grand Prix from the lead and then Lewis Hamilton won it starting from like 13th 14th place or something so yeah 2018 had so many good moments uh, of course Ferrari and Mercedes had such good cars I actually think the Ferrari was the better car in 2018 I said it at the time and I'll say it again I think the 2018 Ferrari was the better car so it's just a shame that the title can continue towards the end of the season but nevertheless I think 2018 was such a good season full of so many good races I just wish that it had a, a better title fight and then it definitely would have been a little bit higher up on this list but nevertheless still a really good season so yeah in fifth place is 2018. Now, in fourth place, I've got the 2014 season. Now, there was so much exciting stuff going on in 2014. It really was actually a decent season. Number one, of course, the introduction of the brand new cars, the 1.6 liter turbo hybrid era. And even it was actually really good to, and ironically, really, to see Mercedes winning because we just had four years on the bounce of Red Bull dominating. So it was actually quite refreshing, again, in an ironic way, uh, to see Mercedes winning. And that battle between Lewis Hamilton and Nico Rosberg, the two, the two Mercedes teammates for the title and how their relationship changed as well of course there were many highlights with them of course crashing uh, with each other in Belgium and then of course their little incident in Monaco as well where Nico Rosberg during qualifying went straight on and of course prevented Lewis Hamilton from setting a faster lap and I think that's kind of where it all started but certainly that that season had so much drama and of course it did give us a title decider although the title decider wasn't the best there were still quite a few good races and the, the rise of Daniel Ricciardo him going to Red Bull beating Sebastian Vettel and having some amazing races having some incredible moves the last of the late breakers and I think one of the best races that season was absolutely hungry uh, of course Daniel Ricciardo took the win Mercedes had a bunch of trouble there was a bunch of carnage there and even Fernando Alonso almost won the Hungarian Grand Prix in 2014 so yeah overall I think it was a really good season uh, 2014 it was really great to see Mercedes winning at the time uh, and that really good teammate battle as well I just wish that the final race was a little bit better and it was a little bit kind of more closely fought but overall I thought in the first season of the hybrid era was a really solid season. So yeah, in fourth place is 2014. Now we are into the top three and in third place is 2017. Now what a season this could have been for the first half of the season honestly I think it was like one of the best ones I've ever seen but then it just kind of collapsed and in the second half of the year it was nowhere near as good now in terms of good races 2017 actually gave us a lot of really good races if you remember Baku in 2017 what a race that was of course where Lewis Hamilton and Sebastian Vettel collided under the safety car Daniel Ricciardo took the win Lance Stroll was on the podium and then of course we also had uh, Austria with Bottas getting that amazing start on the line if you remember that and then then even, of course, the first ever wet Singapore Grand Prix. What a crazy race that was uh, with both Max Verstappen and uh, Sebastian Vettel and Kimi Raikkonen colliding. And even then, of course, we had the USA Grand Prix where Max got that penalty uh, due to that really late overtake on Kimi Raikkonen, a deserved penalty for cutting the corner. So yeah, overall, it was a fantastic season, but I really wish that Sebastian Vettel could carry on that title and actually kind of give us a bit of a showdown and give us a better showing in the second half of the season. But Ferrari had loads of issues. Sebastian crashed uh, in Singapore. So yeah, it definitely had a lot of potential but it wasn't as good as it could have been but nevertheless a still really good season with so many good races so many good moments so yeah in third place is 2017.
So now we are into the top two and in second place is the 2010 season. Now, there was so much to kind of be excited about just going into the season. Schumacher returning, a great lineup in the uh, top three teams with Alonso to Ferrari, the two British drivers at McLaren, and then of course Sebastian Vettel and Mark Webber at Red Bull having almost won the title in 2009. So yeah, and the brand new three teams as well and wow, did the season deliver. Throughout the entire season, different teams were stronger at different tracks and uh, I mean, there was so so many good races of course the famous uh, moment in germany as well fernando is faster than you are oh, felipe I, I feel sorry for you man uh but yeah it was an amazing season so many different kind of good moments australia 2010 that was a great race as well and then of course it all culminated in a brilliant title finale with four different drivers being able to win the title in the final race and it was sebastian vettel who became the youngest ever formula one world champion uh, and actually won the won the title having never led uh, at any point during the season so yeah 2010 was certainly an incredible uh, an incredible season from start to finish and it delivered on all the hype and uh yeah an, an absolutely amazing season and of course it began the red bull dominance and yeah definitely a real classic season with some real amazing moments so yeah in second place is the uh, 2010 season so in first place and it is no surprise it is the 2012 season and what a year, what a season. It isn't just the best of the previous decade. It's one of the greatest seasons in Formula One history. I mean, seven different winners from the first seven races, six world champions on the grid, and one of the best, in fact, the best title showdown I've ever seen in the final race between Fernando Alonso and Sebastian Vettel. I mean, in terms of highlight races and good races, choose i mean choose a race throughout the entire season it was so great i think the number one has got to be for me anyway brazil that title showdown was such a roller coaster of emotions and i absolutely loved it, it there were so many highlights of course even uh, the european grand prix at valencia that was quite a good race of course with fernando alonso winning at his home grand prix uh, that was the race where maldonado maldonado crashed out lewis hamilton in that race but he even won a race in spain so i mean if, if maldonado is winning a race you just know that's going to be an incredible season so yeah 2012 it just got better and better and better an incredible comeback by the way by Sebastian Vettel he was down a lot of points about midway through the season and he came back in that really good Red Bull I am kind of sorry for Fernando Alonso I thought he deserved to win that title but nevertheless what a season the, the amount of races seven different winners in the first seven races even Sergio Perez of course getting the podium in Malaysia what a race that was almost uh, I'm almost winning the race from Fernando Alonso so yeah Sergio Perez was also a massive highlight it also had a few little shocking moments and some really funny moments as well if you remember Kim Raikkonen's classic radio in uh, Abu Dhabi Okay, we need to keep working all four tyres, please. Keep working all Yes, four yes, 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 I'm doing all the time. We don't have to remind them to check it. The shock move by Lewis Hamilton to leave McLaren as well. So everything about that season was just pure magic. It was pure drama. And it culminated in a fantastic showdown with, of course, Sebastian Vettel winning his third world title. So it delivered on the hype. And it is undoubtedly not only the best season of the last decade, it's one of the greatest seasons in Formula 1 history. So yeah, in first place, it is the 2012 season. Well, guys, there you go. That is my ranking of the 10 seasons from the previous decade. Now, if you disagree with me and think it should be something else, don't get aggy in the comments. Let me know your top 10 in the comments below. I cannot wait to see what you guys think. And nevertheless, I do hope that you enjoyed this video. And uh, if you did, then forget to drop a like, smash that subscribe button, and check out my social medias. Instagram and Twitter will be above. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye, guys.